When the pages of your story lie open, it's easy to see where life hasn't gone to plan. Choices are furrows in the sand formed by flowing water to be forgotten when the channels shift. And the only thing that offers any clarity is an ending. That is, if you have one. If you're allowed one. It might take you by surprise to know that I already know my ending, and it is not favourable. Written to placate those in power who feel discomfort with the way I live. This story might give you a representation of me that is sour to the tongue. Don't judge me how others judge me. Instead, keep your mind open for an ending that is still to come, and could still change a life has a history, complicated and difficult. This is mine. Actually, this is a history of us. He wishes it was a history of us. Well, I'm with you every step of the way. A helping voice in the dark. You realise that different departments of your conscience have their own agenda. It's as much my story as yours. There's no escaping you. Why would you want to escape me? I'm here to help. We can't have your story written down, remembered, without it giving out the right message. Where would that lead us? What kind of ideas would that put in people's heads? And who was it that put this story of mine out there? An author of great renown, his stories reaching far and wide. Well, surprise, surprise. What surprises you about that? The year is 1724. And this is the moment her husband leaves her, putting her whole future in jeopardy. And you are? You know me. Sure. But, for the sake of clarity, remind me. I'm Amy. Your maid. Ah, <gasps> yes. It's 1724, and this is Amy. The most loyal of my maids, that's right, I call you Amy. And for this account of my history, or well, the name forced upon me, is Roxana. A stage name given to someone raucous. Scandalous. A whore. Well, that depends on your perspective, doesn't it? Comply and live, deny and starve. A motto. A justification for my strength. Although this name may seem less than complimentary. I will make it mine. You see, the year is 1724 and her husband is leaving her. When I was 15, I was married off to this thing called a husband. Whatever I thought of marriage, this was not it. Our partnership was fine and after some years of his matrimony, he has decided to leave. I'm the brewer. And my name is... Irrelevant. What do I say, Amy? They are things to be cared for. Looked after. You have to deserve a name. As your husband, it's a right fucking slap in the face. It's for your protection. My history cannot be used to implicate anyone in it. That's well, very fair of you. It doesn't seem very fair to strip me of my name. All that's relevant is that he, you, sir, are a fool. Supposedly, I'm a fool. And if there is one thing truly detestable in this world, it is fools. Drunk fools. Happy fools. Mad fools. Fucking fools. I have my opinions. But when asked to substantiate my thoughts, I replied so weakly, so spinelessly, that all who heard me were made instantly sick <laughs> and ashamed. I can't believe I lasted this long. Well, shit with money. Shit at business. <laughs> shit at most things, really. Except one thing, isn't that right, dear? Mm, whatever gets you to sleep at night. And there was no big fight. I'm serving you both breakfast and he 
websites. I'm leaving. To start a new history somewhere else. That's what he said to me. Go in. And I've decided. This is it. The day before he actually went. He wanted one more night. Why did we ever marry? He offered you security. In an insecure world. I like that. Oh, before he drank it away, of course. So he leaves me and his five children, and there it is, children. The only thing that fools are good for. Left in desperate measures. How can I keep them? I have nothing to care for them with. So very cruel. Do you not love them? Are you not their mother? Are you not their father? <laughs> After he left, this is what's best. But, Mum, where are you going? Nowhere, dear. You are going. Where are we going? Uh, somewhere else, love. What happens if we don't want to go? What happens then? We want to stay here with you. Be here with you. You don't have a choice. Don't you love us? Do you? Of course. Will you come visit us? Will you? Please. Please. Of course. And they were gone. Sent away from this house. To somewhere better. To an aunt. Sister of the brewer. Oh, my Amy. That's just what you do when you're married, right? You don't need to be married to have children. Such a hard thing to do, to send your children away. It must require great strength. It was the only way to make sure that we would all survive. And, once they were gone, with no children, no husband, there begins my history. And not from before? With the brewer? After. With me. You could be anywhere else. I can't pay you. Why did you stay so... Loyal. You could have worked for someone respectable. I wanted more than security. You, my lady, wanted to go further than your means. You created a path I could follow. My husband left. The brewer left. I was alone. Poor woman. Alone in the city. As we all know, this is where this respectable story of a woman with no money, no husband, should end. This is no end. With the brewer gone. This is the beginning. There. That's why I stay. Hello? Is there anybody in? Oh, there's someone at the door. I'm too poor to have visitors. Oh, the bailiffs will still ring the bell, miss. Hello? Oh, it's the landlord. Oh, the jeweler. I know you're in. There's nowhere else for you to go. He's not a bad man. How can you say that after he stripped the house? Well, there's still the roof. He hasn't taken that yet. I can hear you. Now, that I have no husband, not presently, not currently. In the last nine months, the jeweller hasn't asked for any rent once he realised just how poor I was. My dear, how poor you live. The lowest of the low. No money, no future. And so forth. Husband ran away. Only this lowly maid for company. He keeps going on and on about it. It makes me sad to think about it. Such a shame it makes him sad. So sad. Such a shame. Have dinner with me tonight to show you how sad I am in your circumstance. Yeah, but your wife. Oh, she's left me. How can it be so common for spouses to run away from each other? What we had to eat was unimportant. Amy took his money and bought it. Keep a little for yourself while you're at it. I made sure it was very expensive. Over dinner, our feet tangling beneath the table, he looked at me and said, You are the rarest and most valuable of jewels. I started to get the idea that for all his kindness, he was expecting. Is it called kindness when you expect something in return? Can I deny him? 
Why would you deny him? My honour? Honour's a currency for when you've got nothing left to sell. An opportunity has presented itself. Should not go wasted. She argues for the devil like she's one of his lawyers. So I say to her, I'm still married, no matter how much I might want it. Tell him you will do as Rachel did to Jacob. Do you all know your Bible? Offer up your maid to him. If you can't comply, don't deny and starve. You'd want that. He owns this house. He would remove all favours. I wouldn't deny him. But you should hang me if I did. <laughs> it's not you he wants. My mistress will hum and haw. Isn't it wonderful to be wanted? To receive kindness at the expense of mind, body and soul. The offer of a relationship that is so much more than the one before. And in return, selling off any regard to religion, conscience, any modesty. To be desired by someone who could do you such good. Could do you such good. Such good! So I yield to the jeweler. So romantic to yield, don't you think? He was above our wealth, his circumstances easy. He promised wealth, a continuation of my history. How could I argue? You can't. He takes me in his arms. Like this? He kisses me. Like this? Like that. Ugh. I should have known we should never have come together by the laws of man of... God, that feels good. Poverty was my snare. Not that that's a justification for what I did, but that that might make you understand why. My God! There was no vice in my decision to act, but there was vice in the act itself. In gratitude of all the favours this man has given me. We're all whores and rogues, after all. Yes. Yes! I sinned with my eyes open sore. Everything, every drop of sweat felt, every shudder and judder. Oh. I did it because I had to. I kept doing it because I enjoyed it. Christ! In this moment, I felt free. I could have something more than was ever promised to me before. Through him, I had a way to start again. You... Oh! My constitution drips from me like the charge that comes from him. Now I am full of pleasure, regret, shame. That's what the voice in my head would say. This relationship went on for some time. Seconds, minutes, months, caught in the ecstasy of one another. Instead of all that wishy-washy stuff, Ugh. it was a year and a half. That was wonderful. In our year and a half, he called us husband and wife, though in my eyes, and more importantly, those of the law, we weren't. Their spouses both ran away. Driven, yes, driven into the arms of one another by circumstance, by wealth and security in an insecure world. But one thing the jeweler didn't have was any children. How I'd love a child of my own. It would complete me. Carry on my name. And despite all our shared intimacy. And not for want of trying. No child. How upsetting. It's strange, isn't it? What is? Well, you've had children before. All it would take for you to secure your future would be to squeeze a new one out. Oh, yeah, as easy as that. You would think that an author of such great renown would do enough research, know enough about the world to know it would never be as easy as that. I think I could have had at least two babies in that time. Oh, you do, do you? So, like Rachel and Jacob, do you know your Bible? What? Well, maybe you could fuck him and make one. You're crazy, I, I should have said, but didn't. Well, if I can't, you should. You offered before. Yeah, I a year and a half ago. Well, you have my permission. What, to, to sleep with your husband? Well, he's not actually my husband. Offer again. I, I would, but... But one. You must. Yes. Please. You said you'd hang. My duty to my mistress holds me tight. As her hands take off my clothes. He's not my husband. She said she did not want. I had cast off all principle. All 
My calls. Stifled my conscience for her to share my sin. Yes, it's not my rule. Nothing to do with me. He says, as he puts his arms around me. He says, as I watch, I lie still. And I do watch. How romantic. As wife of his affections, we lived happily. Once Amy understood her role. My mistress and her man. Our opportunity for a better life. The perception of our entirely normal, well-to-do family. A lie. An attempt. I was Whatever a... I am, you are too. I hate her. Said the jeweller. I hate her, he says. I hate her. How can he be allowed to hate me? I hate her, he says. He hated her after that evening. I hate her. He hated me seven more times. I hate her. He didn't hate her. I was scared by the jeweler's hatred towards Amy, but it was needed. He would have stayed for you. The jeweler had no children. How I love a child of my own. And I never managed to give him one. It's not fair. Amy was with child. It's not fair. And in those nine months, she served me diligently. And a boy was born. <laughs> He has your nose. And your eyes. He doesn't. I know he shouldn't, but he does. There's nothing of me in him. The bastard has to go. What? I don't want him. I don't... I won't let him go. He's not ours. Stop me. Amy. Miss, please. You have to. You're quite right, my dear. No. I did. Do you think it was easy giving up my children? I gave up five, each one, like tearing away a part of my heart. You made it look so easy. to do with trust. Although he called us husband and wife, there was no proof. So if something happened, God forbid, who would believe me? I can't believe it. Every penny. His house, his coat. Signed away in case of misfortune. All to me. We leave this house. A dream, isn't it? To move across continents freely, to experience new places and cultures. To get away. In the past, I never imagined I would have been able to do that. I could never afford to. And now, well, I couldn't imagine giving it up. The jeweler had stones to sell. Over time, business bred business, and I enjoyed the finer things in life, looked after by this man. If only it could stay like this forever. Why wouldn't it stay like this forever? And what stays the same forever? The jeweler had stones to sell. Think of words that describe power and wealth. Those words that make you think of someone who has more money than they could ever need. More power than they deserve. A man, a royal man, and his name is... Not allowed. That's right. This man wants to meet me, my dear. Good news. Paris is a wonderful place. Have you ever been to Paris? Have you ever been fortunate enough to visit Paris? It is a lawless place. I get scared when you travel around with your case full of jewels. But you are my most precious jewel. Leave your case with me. Why? For my fear. I'll not travel by night. And as he speaks, have you ever had a vision? He became like a ghost, but not a ghost because the thing you're imagining is standing right there in front of you. He changed into something else, something devilish. His skin shrunk back into his bones and his bones started to sweat 
blood. He opens his mouth and a river runs out over his lips, over white cliff teeth hanging over a vast blood red sea. And he says, Are you all right, my dear? A red death mask, a phantom of doom. You look pale. A vision of skulls and blood soaked coats enters a night. This is the beginning of the end of the world. My mistress says, don't go. Well, she tries to stop her. I'm not going to miss visiting a prince because of some hysterical vision. Please. How will I sell them if you can't see them? Describe them. I don't think you know how business works. Oh, but you are so smart. Tell him that they are too valuable to travel. Take a sample. Please. For me. is a lawless place. Paris is a lawless place. And it doesn't take much for rumours of a man with a case full of jewels destined for a prince to spread through the city. All thieves and monks, after all. But I still go. Oh, you do go. Why do I go? Because that's what happened. He leaves. And that day, he is murdered by three robbers. What? No. Surely there's something we can do about this. No, nothing can be done. My poor jeweler stabbed through his most generous heart, dying almost instantly after swallowing mouthfuls of blood. You see, they thought he would be carrying a case load of jewels. That day of the death masks and the bleeding skeleton, they killed you for these simple things. The driver told the us. The driver survived? Oh, yeah, they were supposed to kill him, but didn't. How do you know they were supposed to kill the driver? That's not the story you should tell. How about the driver is the luckiest damn soul alive? Or at least has some solace knowing the driver survived this terrible ordeal. Much better. Lucky bastard. So they went through his clothes. Well, that's what I heard, what that poor soul of a driver said, dragged his body from the coach like an animal, picked at his bones, trying to find the jewels that was here with me. Was I not a good husband? You were never my husband. Will you not miss me now I'm gone? Are you not sad again? Oh, woe is me. But it was no surprise. I saw it coming. I had cried all the tears I could cry even before I heard the news. No one saw her tears. You saw me tell him not to go. That poor man. Well, that's what is written by a well-known author. That doesn't mean I have to like it. You're so hypocritical. I have no love for this writer. He could have written you an ending that I would have agreed with, but he hasn't. So instead, I'll have to establish one more befitting of your story. Well, of course, he should listen to you instead of me. With the jeweler dead, you are alone again. What am I? A ghost. All right. Tell me how my story ends. Go wild. I want you to tell me what you've done wrong. We have to hear you acknowledge your own folly. What am I meant to say? We have to hear what you have learned, how you've changed, how much you regret your choices. And then I'll be free. Then you'll be free. So? Mournful, regret, with a touch of, with a taste of repentance. So? Something along the lines of, after many years, of living a lovely life, my history has caught up with me. My life's happy circumstances ruined, lying sick, bedridden, poor in life as in wealth, no family, no children, no soul. Yes, probably in a nunnery somewhere, a convent, 
a church or some other godforsaken place. Absolutely. So very sorry for the sins of my past, my present, and my very short future. My sins remind us all of who I am, of what I am. Yes, you sinner. My repentance, of which there is a lot, trust me, is a consequence of my misery, my hurt. Preach! And this hurt comes from my crimes. Sing it out loud for the Lord to hear. Yeah, but fuck that. What? That's just what you want my ending to be. Hell will mend you. Watch me grovel and cry and eventually die. A blast from heaven strike you down, sinner. The sins of my past are necessary for me to have a future. The only person who should be allowed to judge me should be me. Judge her. Judge her. Can I even judge myself? Looking back. You should. Well, that was a rhetorical question. If this great writer of yours can't even decide an ending and won't defend me from your attempts, why should I put so much time and effort to deconstruct my own actions? You can answer that one if you like. That's not for me to think about. I may not have been his wife. But that's not what I told everyone else. How dare you not tell me that you had a wife back home? I... I mean, he... How could you leave me in Paris all by myself? But... How could you leave me everything you had and not anything for your actual, real wife? This was no end. There's no ending here. He chose to continue. I choose to continue. It's been a few months since the death of my jeweler. Paris is a magical place. I've created a corner of the world for myself, entrancing this city as the pretty widow, with my charms, my learned French tongue, and I enjoy where I am. My mistress, secure. Building an empire. The city was abuzz with chitter-chatter of this lady. The beautiful, wealthy widow living on the banks of the Seine. You seem to be attracting some suitors. They're not worth my time. They don't deserve a name. What makes these men so different? None of them offer me anything more than I have already. Well, this one owns his own shop. Well, this one, his own home. That one's a drunk. And that one still sups on his mother's teeth. <laughs> Must be one who has something to offer. Prince. What does that mean? How does that feel? I'm regal, rich. I've an estate, or many estates. There's peacocks on my lawn. I speak with a clipped tongue, a cultured tongue, fashioned through years of family pride and inbreeding. I travel in stately transport. I don't know much, but I know what I like. Married. Another married man. With a wandering eye. Wandering straight into me. This is the man you're interested in. A prince. I wear the finest clothes. This is made of silk. Touch it. It's the finest cloth you'll find anywhere in this world. I like material things, shiny things. This is made of gold. Not cheap, everyday gold, but the finest and most lustrous of gold. <laughs> My silken clothing is made from the dreams of those that serve me. <laughs> Don't I look like the finest golden thread? God, I look good. But that's not why I'm interested in this man. It helps, but it's not what I need. This man offers me something no other man can. He walks into a room and people stop and listen. Here's a man who through birth holds great status, power over others, power in high places, the power to make my dreams a reality. This man, a prince, showers me in gifts, attempts to make me smile after the death of my 
dearly departed husband. If only he knew. I lost my virtue before. I'd do it again for a prince. Was it easy? Like a well-worn glove. But he was a prince. I gave him the only thing I could give. <laughs> do anything back to me, but not anything too perverse. <laughs> this was my prince. And through him, I became the queen of whores. Look how far you've come. From Brewer. To Jewler. To Prince! <laughs> In his palace, he had a princess of his own. I knew about her. I guess she knew about me. Not likely. He tells me in moments of intimacy. You are the most handsomest creature on this earth. Creature? Am I? Rumours of the prince's mistress's beauty spread through the streets of Paris like a plague, driving men mad in their dreams. You aren't real. What do you mean? Well, with your clothes, your handsomeness, your makeup. I don't wear makeup. But your face. All this time together, and you think I wear makeup? Yeah. Touch my face. What? Touch my face. Why? Just. Touch it. Go on. Touch it. Maybe he thought with his touch I would vanish. This touch could have been a moment between us, something real. But this is my prince. And I am a queen. A prince has certain needs. Secrecy! This dirty little secret. We can't have a scandal. I had moved home to be somewhere more... discreet. You have your house and I have mine. Confined in captivity. The price you pay to lie with a prince. I'll sneak through the back and no one will be any the wiser. Every time I leave, I'll leave something shiny and beautiful. I don't need your gifts. But I want to. I worry that what you're seeing will give you an unfair representation of this man. Do you see why I wanted to protect people's names? How would this be unfair? He, he thinks he owns you. I am not a thing. Hey, don't worry. The nine starve, comply and live. Amy! Do you feel like you have to pay me for the things we do? No. We can be together for nothing. I can be your lover. You shall never ask for anything. Although, I might ask certain favors. <laughs> he gave me gifts without having to ask. But seeing as we're spending so much time together, maybe I can ask one small thing. While the Queen of Whores and her prince lay all cosy in bed with one another, outside their room, my story continues. Well, of course. If I couldn't leave the house, how else was I to survive? Well, who would do the shopping, the cleaning, letting the air in? Yes, uh, Filling but, my bar? Yeah, Empty but, the pot, go to the bank, put the right number of coals in my bed warmer? Yes, but I'm saying I did more than just my usual duties. Ah, uh, yes. So you did. Well, we had a connection as you earned, I earned as you loved, I loved. You, Jade, you. It's fate that two people in service of their betters would find one another. That while they spent time together upstairs, I was downstairs with him. How exactly did you seduce him? Well, I just didn't see any of this. Well, at first, we spoke only in whispers. The more time we spent together, the more life made a little more sense. As if the jigsaw fell into place with her every touch. Here was someone I could do 
Whatever I wanted to do with till my heart's content, dig my claws into it and not feel the shame of it. I don't have claws, do I? Well, anything they can do, we can do better. We're all whores and wolves after all. Like maid, like mistress. I love you. You don't love him. How do you know? Well, there's no problem with you having fun with this servant, but if we're recounting my history, we should get the facts right. It's my choice whether I love him or not. When have you ever made a choice? Well, I stayed with you, didn't I? What would you do if I left? Would your reference be glowing? Of course. You don't control everything. Yet yeah, here we both are. You're afraid I'll leave. What have I got to be afraid of? Can I not be my own queen? But I understand why she's angry, but what could we do? Don't get hysterical. While the queen of whores sleeps with her prince, I took the prince's servant as my own. Maybe I'll marry him. <laughs> Are you all right? Here's my warning. To all you ladies of the world, never love a fool. You're mumbling in your sleep again. I'm not. You are. How can I sleep with all your prodding and poking? We have these rich men, doting men. Disappearing men. This has to end. Further tragedy written into my narrative. The prince had made up his mind. Here's a little something to make it better. Decided that change was inevitable. He had his reasons. They always do. My prince left. And with him, he took my gentleman. Every second he doesn't spend with me feels like fresh heartbreak. I felt the same. Oh, Amy. Yes, I know. Oh, what will I do? Well, we'll do what we've always can done. I do? What can At we least do? I'm not poor do you again. let me speak? At least I'm not poor. What about me? The princess died and I was cast aside. I lost someone too. Of course. The sanctimonious and pious promises made to a dying princess. To find a respectable wife. Or to treat her correctly. Or to find a legitimate heir. To be better. Because of the promises made to a dying woman somewhere else, he runs off. Does that not, does that not anger you? Do, do you know what to just say his name? No. Say it. No. no. We are not the only whores here. The princess knew what he was up to. Yeah. So he said. And when she died. Oh, my dear princess, here I speedily come to your deathbed, lit by the soft yellow glow of gothic candlelight, accentuating your royally fucked features. Oh, it's so very regal of me. So good, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> Please don't cough up on me. I have a sensitive disposition. But now that I'm finally here by your side, I promise I'll never see her again. I'll be better. For you. It wouldn't be. I'll be good for you now, now that I've had my fun. Because now that you're dead, dying, I have to have a conscience. Maybe I'll keep it in my pants, in your memory, I mean. If I couldn't do it while you were alive, maybe I will. Now you are dead. Amy took it pretty hard. Selfish prick. Just awful. We're kind of in the middle of something here. See, I don't have any issues with you having a story. That's not my problem. I'm trying to make it more palatable for our audience. Palatable? Yeah, a fancy word for suppression. I know what palatable means. I'm not trying to suppress you. It's not about you. Does the story of this woman repulse you? Oh, don't be stupid. Come on. Speak up now. He's just been a dick because he's not getting his own way. Her story has to end here. You do realise if her story ends, yours does too. Worth it for the right ending. She needs the right to choose. And unlike before, yeah, fuck the fools. I'm better placed. I'm free. I'm rich. Really fucking rich. How much? I don't understand. How much for more time? How much does a lifetime cost? Will that shut you up for a while? Time to leave Paris. Au revoir, France. I've conquered this place. Find me a merchant. 
Are we not going to talk about what happened with the prince, with my gentleman? The pain is too raw. Oh, bet it is. So, my merchant, in my travels around the city, I had heard of such a man. Fair. A place to book travel and trade jewels into bonds in her name. See, I'm not stupid enough to travel around carrying a case load of jewels. It's expensive to charter a ship. But with her jeweler's wealth and prince's gifts, she was really fucking rich. We all know that. Well, I'm just saying. Well, don't. It's unbecoming. It's not ladylike. <laughs> We can't have that, can we? <laughs> Hello. The merchants are Dutchmen. The amazing people you meet on your travels. My mistress has come to charter a ship. It's expensive to charter oh, a ship. Oh, we know. He can do it. I can do it. Good man. A bit of a plain man. Honest man. Kind of boring man. Nothing boring about being rich. What's this man called, then? What do we call you? Do we say Dutchman? Boring man? Good man? Oh, who cares? Um, it's important. Well, it's what your about... story. We'll call you... Merchant. And you must be... News of the jeweller's wife had travelled far and wide. I was sorry to hear of your husband's death. I met him once, did dealings with him. You're every bit as beautiful as they say. The merchant thinks I should sell my jewels. The value in bonds is much safer. And that he knows the very person to purchase a dead man's jewel. Thanks for making it at such short notice. It's wild out there. I assume you've heard the news of the death of the jeweler. He had heard of the death of my jeweler. It's caused quite a stir. Terrible to be caught like that. Gutted like a fish. He died terribly. And this lovely lady was his wife. How awful. How sad. This fine lady is looking to sell some of her late husband's jewels. When seeing my jewels, this suspicious man, this accuser, thought as any suspicious man might. What an awful accusation. That I was responsible for the death of my jeweler. We are talking of her late husband, no less. And taken the jewels for myself. What an awful thing to accuse of this wonderful woman. No, you've changed your tune. What a baseless and ridiculous accusation to make of this charming woman. But there's a problem. I could not prove myself to be the wife of the... Poor sir, such a shame. ...jeweler. Do you think this woman is some sort of devil? And they would only have to sail back across the channel to find out the truth. This man wants to have you jailed. Some of the most innocent people in the world have been forced to confess to crimes they are not guilty of. This accuser flies into a rage and shows his cruelty and malice. So the merchant says... Rogue. Accused a grieving wife. A defenceless widow. The accuser says he'll bring back the authorities. Get out of my sight and take your forked tongue with you. And he leaves. Dreaming of jewels he wishes were his. And in this moment, my mistress uses the merchant's confidence in her. Ship. 
Nothing more. It's the ship. You know, I'm not usually afraid of sailing. But with the amount of noise the sailors are making above our heads, something is wrong. Never again! No. The whole world rocks. All our sense right in front of me. Everything we've done, there's, there's no future, no, no hope, just this, oh, this sway and the, the taste of acid in my mouth. Will I ever be calm again? I'll tell you when we'll be calm. When we are drowned, then we might be calm. Calm as heaven. <laughs> heaven? If we drowned now, we would be doomed. <laughs> We'd sink through the waves and ebbs and flows and be found in hell from water into fire. <laughs> These lives we have led, and, and you think we could, we could go to heaven? <laughs> no, seeing. As we have some shared experiences, Amy's words strike a chord deep in me. Who are you that I am not? I am the one that made you wicked, so if you are down, what am I? Guilt is a heavy thing. I'll sink faster than you. This might have been the right thing to say as a form of comfort, but I say nothing. I stay silent and still. And she becomes more violent in her protestations, and in her violence, I begin scared that I may lose her. How do you keep someone on your side even after you have done them so much wrong? What are you doing? I hear him in my head. You can't hear anything over the no over this noise. He's telling us we're going to hell. The sound of the sailors, the scream of the twisting board, lightning dances itself between the woods. No! No! It'll be okay. It'll be okay. A low rumble permeates through my skull, a note of face seeps into my brain, an all-consuming roar, a wave of sound crashes against my conscience. Look at the state of you. Oh, can you hear? Why did you decide to leave me? I'll take you back. You can come back into my open arms and I'll forgive you. I don't want your forgiveness! Do you have any morals left? Yes, yes, I swear, I swear. Lots and whores. Suppose I'll die on some horrific shipwreck, my bloated body found on the shore by some unsuspecting beachcomber. I don't want to kill you. God loves his children. Are you not told God loves his children? How you should live your life? Have you forsaken me? I thought you were to save us! To be saved? I want you to be remembered for the right reasons, and for that, your story has to end, for lack of a better word, properly. Oh, oh how kind it is of you, that you would even appear to me as some, some fantastical vision. <coughs> oh. How much it means to me that you care so deeply for my legacy. If only everyone had a guardian angel such as you, then there would be no sin in this world at all. Tell me, have you never sinned? You're not here to judge the actions of a witness. Am I on trial? Everyone is on trial. It gives me no pleasure to see you in such pain. Maybe in this storm you will find some salvation. We know, we know. Childless. Well, that is not entirely true. Missing mothers. Wedding bar breakers. <laughs> Godless. It has nothing to do with him. You, you made me like this. I made you nothing. 
sing. Barella sing me. Shouting out loud for the whole world to hear, if only they could, over the sound of the sea. Call me virtuous! Better! We only better! Call me The sun breaks out over the horizon as night comes to an end. And the storm not only stops on the sea, but in my head and in my heart. With the sight of land, my fear of death vanished. And with it gone, as surely as every wave breaks, my taste for life returns. There is no hope. Now we're back on home soil, there's no sense of repentance. Like a criminal, I'm not sorry for my crimes. Only sorry I'm to be hanged for them. But we prayed to him. You prayed? How else did we survive? How would my story continue if I wasn't going to survive? I'm back on home soil. I've bought myself a modest house. Modest? I don't even think I've seen so much space in a building. There's no better sign of wealth than space. Space to write to my merchant man from Amsterdam. In these letters, I call him friend. Friend? I don't think I've ever heard you call anyone else friend before. Are you jealous, Jade? When you call me Jade, is, is that meant to be affection? It's only for you. Autonomy means control. And here, right now, it means sitting at my desk, writing a letter to the merchant. Why? Because I feel like it. But why? I need to let him know I am safe, to thank him for his help, how much I appreciate it. But why write a letter when he's right here? What? Why write a letter when he's right here? And there he was. The merchant. I was so overwhelmed that I'll freely admit I cried to see him. Oh, sometimes you are such a flirt. He runs into my arms. What a joy to see you. Both as glad as one another. How good it is to see you safe. When he came back with the police and you had left, how he raged. He's talking about the suspicious man told me he was going to get you hanged for your husband's murder. And so forth. Then he'd have you stripped of your husband's jewels, and then we would split them, which I obviously rejected. My honest merchant. A man possessed, as if the very thought of you haunted his mind. Driven with this madness, he investigated you more thoroughly. He did? Tried to find out everything about you. And? There was not much to find. I made a successful escape. But? There's a but. He found out where you had lived. That the place you stayed belonged to a prince. Oh, oh, this is the end. It seems he tried to contact this prince. And? He got as far as the prince's subordinate. Oh, who was he? Who? Uh, the servant. I don't know. Is he important? Uh, no. And then? A couple of nights later, this accuser was accosted in the street, muffled up in a great cloak, taken somewhere dark and private, and his ears cut off, told off for his impudence. 
A reminder not to let his tongue get away from him. How can someone get told off when they've had their ears cut off? How terrible. Isn't it? And that's so, is it? What do you mean? There's nothing out. I couldn't stop thinking about you. You don't think that I had anything to do with it, the incident with the ears? How could you? Seems I am safe. It would have been rude not to have offered him a place to stay. Our rooms were so close we could have called to one another from our beds. Hello, madam. Hello, merchant. All perfectly honest. Over dinner. I want to hear all about your journey home. At first, he laughed. <laughs> it's always wild on that stretch of sea. But it was normal. That was anything but normal, I can assure you. You both have womanish fears. That I was exaggerating. I could hear the hardened, world-weary sailors weeping. But you, madam... He says... As I pour the wine. But you, madam, are so good a lady, so pious, that you would have gone straight to heaven. Straight to heaven, by God. Death in any form has terror in it. I have already seen it. I am so in your debt already. There is nothing more that you can do for me. There is nothing more? Well, that is up to you. Why else would he make the journey? If he wanted to make love to me. If he was to make love to you, what would you do to him? I have feelings for this man. I have everything I need in this life, wealth and security. This man is something that I have never had before. He is good. We were in such close acquaintance that were an opportunity to arise, we could have. But he held back. He flirts with her, getting close to you. You're very cynical. You're not cynical enough. We talk more than most husbands and wives do, but we always stay within the boundaries of modesty and decency. until this evening, and now we are married. And I try to give this man back his confidence. It's late. You could come with me. If I did, I don't know what I would do. As I go to my room, I leave the door open. Nothing would destroy his confidence like a closed door. As I prepare for bed, I hide nothing, taking all my time to look up before seeing him standing there. You devil. He comes into the room and closes the door. I pretend to scold. Do you not want me here? I wanted to sleep with him tonight. Is this what you want? Yes. Have we gone too far? Just with us being together like that and your open door? It's fine. Will you marry me? No. Why do you answer like that? Because... no. So... you'll take me to bed but won't make me your own? I will not be trapped by his matrimony. Couldn't we be together without worrying what others might think? Exactly. So was this journey all for nothing? I can compensate you for your travels. I can make you happy. You're very sure of yourself. You might be the first woman to have slept with a man and not married him after. Well, that's just ridiculous. I see myself born free. If I can support myself, I should enjoy liberty as much as any man. It would be a pity to separate when there's so much love between us. Then stay. You won't keep me. Here I stand. A monument to madness and distraction. 
Is it better to be a wife or a whore? A wife is treated with indifference. A mistress is treated with strong passions. A wife gives up all she has, looked upon only as the highest of servants, at least so mistress can have some control. A wife bears a thousand insults, and a mistress, if insulted, could leave and take another for her sins. These are the arguments I tell myself. There must be a different way. A wife should appear as bold and bright as her husband beside her. She should live at home and own the house and furniture and call them her own. She can pay the servants. She should own their children and be given the respect that she deserves from them. And by law, should he die, she should have everything. A whore skulks and hides in a place that probably isn't hers disowned by others, her family, society by the powers above. If she has any children, she gets rid of them or hides them. And if she lives long enough, she's destined to see them hate her and be ashamed of her. And if he were to become repentant, reformed, he would curse me, do everything to discredit me. This will not happen to me. I will not allow it to happen. While I am single, I can be masculine in my politics. I decide my freedom for a future. And as much as it hurts, this is what I want. I will not marry him. As much as I might care for him. A woman should be in control of her name. Will you ever be content? I am content. He was offering you something good. I don't need him. You could have been happy. Marrying for pleasure. It seems as good a reason as any. It's all just part of your plan, getting me to settle down. There's no hope for you. Who is cares there? about your hope? Now I can live the life I want. A leaning towards legitimacy that I could never afford before. Three maids to tend to my new home, as well as to my Amy. Maybe staying wasn't the worst idea after all. I've risen through the ranks of the household, a mistress in my own right. <laughs> Isn't that the case? Come here. Why? What, what are you going to do to me? <laughs> Don't be so scared. If this is the life I live now, I'm going to turn you into a gentlewoman. Well, what's not so gentle about me now? Oh, there's a steel in you. There is? You should hide it better. What does your future look like? Better than ever before. What do you want? In what? In everything. I don't know. Is it love? Love? You can do so much more than love. Yes. Look where we are. Yeah. No one can tell us how to live. You staying was the best thing that ever happened to me. I don't know what I would have done. I appreciate you. I'm surprised we were never lovers. What? That with everything that happened between us that we never became intimate. Are you serious? Must not have been written that way. Sorry? Someone's little fantasy, maybe. That that would be an easy way to break down our complex relationship. <laughs> I'm surprised, that's all. But no, no, not in this version, maybe. Are you okay? 
I dream of a time when I don't have to worry about how long the sun will shine down on me. When all I have in my head is how I think of me. Not these voices telling me what's wrong and what's right. One day. There. Thank you. But why? Well, Amy, we're having a party. Rumours of my wealth and prosperity grew. Have you heard about my mistress? Oh. oh a wealthy woman. What does she do? What doesn't she do? When can I meet her? This sort of talk attracted the sort of men I'll call fortune hunters. Gold diggers. Lovers and beaux, needy and necessitous. Young bucks who wanted to use my money to settle their debts to make me their prisoner. Who is your man? I live single. I could give you everything. There is nothing you can give me that I can't give myself. I could do you so much good. They would come from far and wide to see her, to gop, if only for a chance to talk with her. Imagine what they would do to dance with her. Musicians hired, caterers booked, tables and furniture cleared away. A gambling table in one of the rooms. For a simple mind to spend hours by themselves. Important people would make their way to the house. They come to play. And they play long into the night. My mistress, the centre of it all. <laughs> Surrounded with admirers. Paying her with their compliments. Pleasured by the compliments she receives. You are beautiful. Not a single one offering me anything more than I already have. But that doesn't mean I can't enjoy the attention. I am human, after all, so let them gush at my Turkish dress. Marvel over my Parisian ornaments. The gold and jewels that adorn my bare neck. Trappings of my travels. I can collect things myself. There's music. A quartet plays. Upbeat. Baroque. Oh, exquisite dancing. Eligible and... Ineligible <laughs> couples. Twined in each other's arms. Together. There's laughter. Beautiful. <laughs> and from the centre of this room, the music in full flow, she rises. Lifted. All eyes on her. She turns. And turns. Side to side, foot to foot. The music moves her. I move for myself. I move knowing all eyes are on me, dancing like everybody is watching. A sole figure in the middle of the floor with complete confidence in herself. But everyone has stopped. I see a girl, one of the maids, standing there, with a plate in her hand, watching in awe. I dance for her. I dance for everyone. I keep dancing, the richest girl in the room. As the crowds watch, I close my eyes and lift my head to the sky, my arms outstretched. The hum of a name. Roxana. Through the music. Quiet at first. Roxana. This label forced upon her, but for no one else to use. Growing through the crowd of men. The music. The people. As she dances. Watching. She's in such a world of her own, she does not hear it. Chance. Building until there's no mistaking it. Get out! Everyone's gone. And that name's not a secret anymore. A stage name given to someone promiscuous. Your life of exuberant freedom is over. You lose your wealth. There's nowhere else for you to go. The next time we see you, you are in a cold, dark jail cell where whatever time you have left drags for all eternity. I'm in jail. Well, locked up for being the witch, am I? <laughs> we don't believe in witches. We are modern men. We have decided that you are a criminal. This harlot, this sinner, this slut should be locked up to save our sons. To save our sons? Oh, yes. And what happens to me in this ending of yours? You're just away. But I, I've nowhere to go. 
And you apologize. What? You repent every single one of your sins. It takes a long, long time. A complete retelling from start until now. A desperate, pleaful rendition right up to your death day. The things you did for a future. <laughs> Bearing your soul for us all to see. For God himself to cast judgment on you. He tried before and failed. Don't I have to admit it to myself, for myself or whatever? Well, you didn't, so I'll have to. You end your days in a secluded convent. Peacefully, you devote yourself to him. So through him, you can achieve your inner peace. Through your repentedness, you shed your sins. So not a witch, but a snake in this ending of yours. Innocent once again, you die at the age of 65, buried in a churchyard, no stone to mark your grave. Not that anyone would visit, anyway. Apart from the nuns who pray for your soul, constantly. So, it's not all bad. Suppose I die of some terrible illness. Yes, spluttering up blood pains in my side. Or oh, am I swallowed up by the ground, dragged into hell, my eyes gouged out by demons? There's such violence in your heart. It's none of those things. You die of mere grief. The fuck is mere grief? Mere grief is giving up. It's being broken. And it is your ending. I have not been broken before. Isn't she such a Roxana, everyone? Forget that name. Her name is Roxana. That name is not for you to use. It's the title given to you by this author. Christ, it's the title of your story. It's how everyone knows you. That name is fixed upon me as effectively as if I had been christened Roxana. To your health. Roxana. Fuck your health. I am more than a name. So much more. Being afraid to be seen when that name had become so known. When it was no longer mine alone. All I had was time to devote to myself and these things that I had accumulated in my time. I'm looking in this mirror and I see myself not much older than 25, yet 15 years have passed since my previous life with the brewer. It had passed in the blink of an eye. My mistress has held her boots. You don't look so bad yourself. It's amazing what money can do. Money is all well and good. I suppose I had started to think, what more do I have that I do not have? What am I worth? Now, remember, my time with the fool left me with five children, all delivered to the brewer's family, his aunt. No, his sister, they don't. Ah, uh, yes. I lost myself in curiosity, and through them, I could find myself. But I couldn't go back. For fear. For love. There's only one person I would trust with that task. I wonder who that could be. Find them for me. How will that do any good? It will do good for me. Is this a demand? This is a request. Is it though? Honest. Having done so much already, I wasn't really in a position to refuse, was I? So, I went to the Brewer's sister's house, this aunt of some kind. Some woman was there who didn't know what happened to the children. So then, I was directed to a neighbour. She told me that this aunt was cruel and didn't care for them. And when the uncle died, they were made to work. She extracted all she could out of them. Two of the children died. The eldest son and youngest daughter, dead. Leaving me with three. But all is not lost. Once the old crone had snuffed it, the two girls and boys stayed with this kind neighbour. But the younger girl... put it down. And now two. The remaining girl later moved somewhere else in the city to work as a servant. And the boy? The boy was sent to work a hard trade. 
But he did so willingly to support this woman who had cared for him. So, I tell her. I have a kindness for this boy. That's a nice touch. It was I who brought him to his aunt's doorstep when his poor mother wanted nothing more than bread. A woman who I cared for and owe much to. You tell me that, that this aunt was cruel and I know his mother would be so glad to hear what happened to her darling son, how you've cared for him. She was my friend. And I'm now in a condition that I can help make change in his world. Send him to school. I have the contact. Set him up as a merchant. I'll never have to worry after him again. I have no children of my own. I mourn for this family. Truly, I, I do. And I'll do everything I can to help what's left of it. Did he ask about me? I know nothing of my dear mistress. She could be poor, she, she could be dead. Will you take my offer? All this makes me feel so motherly. The joy, Amy, and feeling that feeling, it's so uplifting. There's more I have to tell you. Having returned home, I'm getting the maid's task ready for the day. And one of them is missing. Well, that is until she comes rushing in, all flustered and wild, and she says... She... Uh, do you think maybe, if it would help, for the purpose of this conversation, you could be this young maid? Me? Yeah. Just to give me a better understanding of it all. No, no, I don't think, I don't think that's a good idea. Oh, you know this girl so much better than I do. Come on. It'll be fun. Maybe for you. Come on. I'll be you, and you be her. Okay. Where am I? You, me, I am at home. Okay, I see. And where am I during this incident? Out. Right. Where? Oh, this is why I think it'd be so much better no. if... being other people be so easy. Are you ready? I must just have more going on. Just go for how you think I feel, if you can handle it. Okay. Let me... Okay. So, I, th this girl, c comes rushing in. Oh, life is so unfair. Life's not so unfair. Working here in the service of such a highly regarded woman. I wouldn't have said that. Wouldn't or didn't? Both. What would you say? Well, she seemed very upset, so I wanted to find out what was wrong. Wipe away those tears, dear. I'm not ancient. Tell poor old caring Amy what's wrong. A bit much. Oh, come on. <sighs> Thank you for giving me the afternoon off to see my family. Your family did this to you? I'll never go back. What happened? How can I miss it? It's so unfair. I can't agree with you if you won't tell me what it is. Some woman, and he doesn't know who she... She came in a coach, offered him a new life to learn to, to become a fucking merchant. Who is? My brother. You have a brother? When we were young. My mother left us. Well, your father must have as well. Definitely didn't say that. Well, you should have. When we were young, five of us, abandoned. I'm sure she loved you. I wish you were my mother. She didn't say that. You wouldn't have left. You would have stayed with your children. I bet that hurt you. I bet that really stung, didn't I it? I remember it? when she left. It broke my heart. No, it didn't. Yes, it did. Is that you saying that or was that her? She saved him. Am I not worth saving? This girl is my daughter. Yes. We have to let you go. I have nothing. Please. Please. You did well. 
you did right. Do you know how hard it is to conceal yourself from your child? She can never know how my life turned out. Perhaps I'm too much of a tender mother still. I am sick of this vice. I have the means to enjoy this world as much as any man. The devil of poverty has a share in all things, but I delighted in it. Necessity first debauched me. Being called the finest woman in France, caressing a prince. These were my baits. This voice preys upon me, lessening the sweetness in my life, making everything taste bitter, hard to the tongue, mixing sighs with every one of my smiles. Last night, I dreamt of ghosts, skeletons, and apparitions, and when I wake, I am covered head to toe in sweat. Get out of my head. What else can I do? Who are you? What do you mean? What one are you? The only one at all. No, seriously, who? I'm the, the merchant. Are you real? I feel real. Will you marry me? Was it all a joke when you broke my heart and sent me away? It wasn't the right time. Well, we are highly irregular. I will run my own affairs, have my own wealth. What would they say down the docks? That you are a lucky man. If I was a man at all. You once said that you would do anything to make me happy, that you are honest and good. Okay. Yes. I do. I do too. Some might say I failed. That this is the beginning of the end. You adapt it. Only a fool marries. And you work how to control fools. Even good ones. I have to make sure the merchant does not hear the stories of my past. Comply and live. Deny and starve. A justification for her strength. With this resolution, you could say that my history could end there. What would you say about that? Now that you're settled. Now that I'm settled. Now that you have your man. Yes. No. No. Is this not good enough for you? Well, don't get me wrong. Finally committing to a life of subservience does seem like a win for me. I've twisted the rules for my own gain. But it's too late. You have already made your many beds. You are a fool. He is a fool. I am in control. You might be able to control him, but there are others you can't. Amy would never give us away. Never. Now, our lives are too intertwined. And um, what would I gain from that? I'm not talking about her. News of my marriage spread. Whispers and rumours, but I had become used to this. So far, I had kept the stories of that name, that label, from ruining my home and my new husband. You cannot control everything. I wasn't at home the day she came. Amy opened the door and there she stood. My daughter. Amy. What did she say? No. No, I, I don't want to play her again. Well, how else will I know? How about, now this might seem silly, but, but what if he plays the role of your daughter? Me? Him. I might add something interesting to have him play the role. How have you come up with that? He's so interested in what happens next. 
Let him play her. I wouldn't feel comfortable. It is interesting. You're seriously considering having me, of all people, play your daughter? Well... No one would believe it. Like that would be a problem. Well, Amy, I must say, what an original and inspired idea. Thank you. And the first thing you say is, go on. Say it to the poor girl you stood at the door, and the first thing you say to the poor girl is, I am not your mother. But she would not believe it. This young woman thought that I, standing in the doorway, was her mother, that, that I had hidden it from her. Don't say that you're not my mother. I know that you are. She knows it. Why would you want me to be your mother? You gave my brother a chance. I only want to know you. Dear mother, she says. Dear mother. How brutal. To think that I worked under you. That every day we were so close we could have touched. Don't disown me now I've found you. Don't hide from me any longer. I didn't give you up. I know what you did for my brother. That kindness is enough for me to know that you are my mother. When was your mother ever kind? She left you. Look, please, can, can we stop? It's not about what is easy, but what happened. The daughter hung around Amy like a child. Scattered fragments of old tales. Left on a doorstep with her brothers and sisters. Working hard all her life with the little she could get, trampled down and broken up. A mother ran away. The shame of it all. Why won't you have me? Stop, please stop. <sighs> this pain in my chest. I will not be your mother. What was it that made you leave? Was it me? Is there no love in your heart? I would never have left you. I, I, I swear I didn't. I, like she wanted what was best. She, she was now in a way that she could help. We, we didn't know. We didn't. Why would you say those things to her? What? Now you've given her the idea. She now thinks how stupid. How thick. How inevitable. It was you. You left us all those years ago. To think I saw you dancing. She says to me, you were beautiful. I would have asked her to say it again, over and over, if it meant that I could hear her talk about me like that. My words caught in my throat. History caught up to me. How fine you are. How fine, I thought. The idea that this girl, my own girl, could speak about me like this. I don't think I'd ever even thought about that before. And you left us. I dreaded this part of her story, but it pleased me to know that even she could have some love for me. Why don't you say something? Why was this written for me? Why do I have to experience this? Have you nothing to say? Leave her alone. You know nothing of what she has been through. She follows you like a dog, you know, this maid. Like a dog? That's what she said. She would do anything for you. I suppose she would. Was it her idea or yours to support what little family you had left? How can I tell her that I loved my children? You left us. And you have nothing to say about it. You stand there silent and cold and dead inside as if what you do means nothing to others. How could this girl chastise me? Do I mean nothing to you? Will you not apologize? Her very own mother. And what now, my lady Roxana? Don't. Oh, so you do speak. That's what they called you, isn't it? Roxana. My name is Susan. But that's my name. It's something we share. 
You gave me your name? Yes. What have I done that you won't have me? Done? Nothing. Then what? You would have held me back. So you love him, this merchant. What would you know about it? Does he know who you are? Mum. A horrible, weighty word. Do what you have to do. But before you go, can I have one thing? What? Why? Does a mother need a reason? Can you not see what they are trying to do to us? How they have put those words in your head, how they will ruin us all, what he will make you do. Let me go. Let go. It doesn't have to be like this. Amy was visibly upset. Oh, that, that fool. Is she talking about herself or the girl? What did she think would happen? Well, what else could she do? She could destroy everything we've built. She should be at the bottom of a river. Oh, you must be the devil to think like that. I'd get rid of her a thousand times. I say back to her in rage, I would cut your throat. She knows who you are. I'll not touch her. I could do it. You should be hanged for what you've done already. Like mistress, like me. We spend an hour or more like this. Oh, no, no, she... She will never challenge you as her mother in this world, no matter what she might do in the next. I think about sailing away so she can never find me, but I have already run too much. I wonder how quickly she would give up your story. There she is in the arms of her lover. There she is, coins pressed into her hand, my knife pressed in her back. There she is in the crowd watching as the noose tightens round your neck. Piss running down your legs. She only knows so much. Once one thread is pulled. You can't let her get away. To think it could be hidden. You have to, to, to save yourself. To save us. Is there no escape? Not when there's someone who can reveal who and what you are. Your story ruined. She must go. Don't you see? This is what he wants. Why must you desire to see a woman like me brought so low? I don't want her to die. She's dangerous. She's my daughter. Dear, oh dear. The state you're both in. I've gone through too much. Amy, please. But she goes. She goes, and I can't stop her. And she. There's no word from Amy, no word from my daughter, all I have left is. If only you had listened. Maybe all of you could have been saved. You did this. I didn't write your story. This is what you wanted. It brings me no joy. Well, maybe a little. And yet you're still here. And this author has remained silent. How can he be so cruel? to make a living off my life. He should be here to atone this choice. Well, he isn't. He can't be. Because he is dead. Dead? Isn't it upsetting to think that any opportunity to right these wrongs is as dried up as the ink in his pen? You could never win. Forever ruined. If 
ever there was a moment we can see who you truly are, it is now. You say he's dead. But so... So what? If for a few years my story has remained like this, there must be notes of remnants of thought, early drafts, a diary, for some other similar stories that comparisons can be drawn from. A few years? Three hundred years? Instead, other men chopped and changed what they could, trying to find something appropriate, but never able to find a demise suitable. Because the things you have done, they're so awful that he couldn't even bring himself to write another story. It was you who killed him, sucked the life out of him. His own creation, his downfall. With his feeble final flourish, he writes the weakest of concessions. After some years of flourishing, of happy circumstance, as if a blast from heaven hits me following the injury done to my daughter, my husband finding out what I am, my money taken away from me, brought low again, my repentance only the consequence of my misery as my misery was of my crime. Was this all for nothing? With you having learned nothing. You see why it frustrates us so much? It's slack, vague, forgiving, a real waste of paper. Three hundred years. Haven't I changed anything? You never wanted to change anything. At least not for anyone else. This is all about you. But I have changed. <laughs> Your story has been gathering dust for 300 years. It is no great work of literature. It's not remembered. It's not quoted. The author's death was yours as well. But this has not been my death. Why am I still here after 300 years? Unless... Someone else has taken up my story. Who is it? It doesn't matter, because they'll still give you the Except ending. Except they still haven't. It's still the same. He will. At least we know some things haven't changed. You've already lived a life far more than you deserve. Who's here? That seems so ridiculous thing to say, but he is. That is why all this is happening. That's why my ending is still so... Shit, it's not you who matters. So, now, what am I meant to say? What's next? No, no, I know that that is what I am meant to say, but give me something better. Do you have? Something better. Of course you don't. I don't even know why I asked. Useless. You are all fucking useless.
You new writer. I had the right to do the things I did. That might not sit well with you, but it was not your time. What do my actions mean? Here and now beyond me. Be gentle. I can feel your fear and confusion and I am sorry that you couldn't do what you set out to do. That voice must rage inside you too. If you were to be remembered centuries from now, what would they say? Did you think that you could save me from my time? Because you cannot. I cannot. Don't be afraid when you think of my story. Think instead of the good I can do. For I am you and you are me. Why did you choose someone as complicated as me? What made you think that you could attempt such a change? Did someone ask you to? Thinking it would be possible opening up my story for a new audience. I could have been something so different. And now you both cannot let go of me. An ending with clarity. How many pieces of paper have been torn up? How many words cut heat and fury that dissipates the instant it is placed upon the page? Do not think of an end. Instead, think of the possibilities. Amy could come back walking hand in hand with my daughter. Our lives could continue and prosper, endless and impossible to pin down, and that is okay. This new lease of life can extend my end. 300 years ago, I was penned into existence, scribbled down and given life, entering the mind of this author, and here I am again through you. All of you, I continue to exist. After some years of flourishing, of happy circumstance, Seems like a good place to start.